The Cove, a family dining or fast takeout specializing in traditional English fish and chips. It, is, it has a full menu including wings, burgers, sandwiches, and more, but mostly fish and chips. And it's in the business for almost 40 years, winning New Market's Best Fish and Chips repeatedly. It also has catering and private parties available, newly renovated. It is located at 735 Davis Drive, New Market. The owner is Chris Benson. We wanted to discuss more about his restaurant and how he kept it alive. So our team decided to come over, uh, went there and have a personal interview with him. Our team is consisted of Wesley Gard, Nicole Herman, Joshua Kendall, Eduardo Reynoso, and Joe Marduman Long. My name is Nicole Herman and I'm a culinary student at Georgian College in Barrie and this is Chris Benson, the owner of The Cove. So, I'd like to ask you a few Nice questions. to meet you. So, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Sure, go right ahead. Um, cool. This is Wesley. Um, I'd just like to ask you a few questions about the establishment. First question is, what type of uh, restaurant or food service business do you offer? Well, this is a full service restaurant and bar. We have a separate dining room that seats 90, and we have a separate bar area that seats 40. Okay. This establishment has been here for 31 years, but I've been here for 13, and we're located at 735 Davis Drive in New Market. So, what is your main, what do you sell for food? Well, we're a fish and chip specialist. We've been serving fish and chips here for uh, over three decades, and we're, we're very famous for it, and that makes up about 60% of our food sales. We have seven staff members employed. Um, what would you say makes up your main customer base? Um, well, we have a, a whole different demographic. Like we, we have high school students that come in here at lunch on the weekdays during the school year. We have seniors that come in. We have uh, a large group of bar regulars that range from the age of 30 to 65. And we have takeout customers, which is all sorts of different um, demographics from uh, teenagers to senior citizens to families. We have uh, families that come and dine in the dining room. So basically anybody from the age of a newborn until we have a customer actually that sits at the bar that's uh, almost 90. So. Pretty well, anybody that's alive <laughs> likes to come here. So, would you classify the majority of your customers as repeat business or single, repeat single? 99% of the people that come through the door here have been here before and are repeat customers. So, how far away from your establishment do most of your customers live? Well, our bar customers live within walking distance. Um, the students that come in here during the weekday at lunch are from the school right behind us. And our takeout customers usually drive, and, and the dining room customers usually drive. So I'd say within a three kilometer radius maximum. We do. We don't have we don't have a specific uh, program for it, but we certainly listen to our customers. And you know, the best way to gauge that is by what works and what doesn't work. If we put a special on it, it sells. We repeat it. If we uh, if something is not selling, we will remove it from the menu or from a promotion. And um, that's generally how it goes these days. Is you uh, you. Continue doing what works, and uh, if something's not working, you remove it. You don't have dead items 
on your menu or to keep that type of inventory around. It's just uh, counterproductive. So, generally speaking, what information would you like to know or get from your customers? Well, like to know if we're doing a good job. You know, are they happy? Do they are do they like the decor? Do they like the food quality? The prices are staff friendly to them. Um, would they tell their neighbors? You know, it's I mean. Word of mouth advertising is absolutely the best form of advertising you can get. So we definitely want to maintain that type of uh, feedback from our customers so that we can uh, maximize that. So how would you report this information? Well, the, we we have there's two owners here, uh, myself and my uh, business partner, and uh, we keep notes. We leave notes for one another because we usually work opposite shifts, and. Um, when we get together, which is two to three times a week, we'll discuss any of that feedback or any of those problems or complaints. Or, but to be honest with you, our food is pretty standard. Our service is standard. We've been in, we've been around for a long time. We pretty well know what we're doing, and the, and the complaints or or suggestions are pretty few and far between. You know, most of the uh, new ideas come from within. They come from ourselves. Well, it's kind of a two-fold question because there's two different worlds. There's the food business and the bar business. When it comes to the bar business, the customer's not always right. You know, there's a lot of monitoring that has to go on. You have to make sure that somebody is uh, served according to the Smart Serve rules and regulations, and the Alcohol and Gaming Commission um, keeps an eye on us. So we have to sometimes refuse people, uh, even if they haven't done anything wrong. It's just a precaution. When it comes to um, uh, takeout customers, well, if there's ever a problem, and it happens sometimes because there's a lot of items going in a bag, if there's an error made, then we will uh, provide a credit or we'll uh, make sure that uh, we continually ask them if everything is good on their last visit. And uh, if there isn't, if it wasn't, then we correct it. But uh, same as in the dining room, if there's a problem with a food item or something, we'll offer them uh, a replacement or uh, we will just not charge them for the item. Um, customer service is everything in this business and uh, as I go back to word of mouth advertising, if people leave unhappy, they're going to tell people. If they leave happy, they're also going to tell people. So obviously the latter is the goal, right? So why do you think your customers choose your food and establishments over your competitors' Price? The price that we offer our, our food and beverage for is unbeatable in this, in this market, in this neighborhood. Um, the fact that we're a family-run establishment, we're not like a chain, so the people who own the place actually are greeting the customers and serving the customers and cooking for the customers. And um, we do a lot of um, uh, promotion through social media. And we just always keep ideas fresh and uh, make sure that we speak to our customers on a regular basis so we know their name and they know our name. So, how often do you monitor or check on your customers' thoughts and feelings about your business? Every day. Every day. Even, uh, even kids, we ask them every day how everything was. And, you know, we, whenever we're making a menu change, we will take feedback. Uh, from people from just walking in and you know taking just an informal survey and so basically getting feedback from customers and this business is done every minute. So how long does it take you to respond to suggestions or comments you receive from customers about the Immediate. We, that's the difference between a, a, a family owned establishment and a chain restaurant is when somebody makes a suggestion at a chain restaurant, it has to go through a chain of channels. But the people that are here every day have the authority to make changes immediately. So if uh, somebody makes a suggestion on a Monday, that, and, and it's a great idea, that could be theoretically implemented as soon as a Tuesday. So um, that's one of the beauties of having uh, hands-on owners. Customer who buys your product change over the last five years? They have less money. 
you know, um, people are a lot pickier about how they stretch their dollar. There used to be a day, and I'd say it was five years ago, when uh, people really just looked for quality and service, and you know, price was really third. Now, price is first. Um, a lot of it has to do with the fact that we're a bedroom community, and uh, a lot of people that work in New Market, or sorry, live in New Market, work in Toronto or Barry, or so they spend a lot more money on gas now, so they. they they have less disposable income, and one of the first things you cut out from your disposable income is dining out, or you look for cheaper alternatives. So, we have started running $5 specials in the last two years, which is something we wouldn't dream of doing five years ago. What changes have there been, and how customers make reservations and buy? Making reservations? Well, we don't usually get reservations. Um, this is a more of a casual establishment where people just walk in. Um, they don't plan a day ahead of coming here. It's usually a, a last minute decision or you know, earlier in the day. And uh, we have a lot of seating capacity, so the chances of us being full on a regular basis is, doesn't usually happen. It does on special occasions like Good Friday, and in that case, people do make reservations and we take them. But, um, you know, people do call ahead for takeout, and that is something that's hugely important to us, where somebody picks up the phone and they make a takeout order, and we, um, we make every effort to have it ready exactly when we get here, and we have a 10-minute rule. So if somebody calls for takeout at 6 o'clock, by 6.10, that order is ready on the counter, so that it's quick and easy for them to come in, pick it up, and go. And, uh, as far as reservations go, that's the closest thing that affects us as far as reservations. We just call it uh, call a head take it. Um, how, how, much, how is the time, amount of time the customer spends in your establishment change? Boy, in the last five years again, it's really gone down. You know, people spend a lot less time here than they used to. You know, the average customer comes in and spends half an hour for a meal. Whereas, you know, a few years ago, they would stay and have a couple of drinks after dinner and a coffee. And, but now, uh, it's much more common that they want in and out service. So they want their order taken immediately, they want their food within 10 minutes, they want to eat and they want to go. Desserts have been few and far between, and I think that's an industry, uh, industry trend that. Uh, uh, you see that on menus when you go out to places that, you know, you can get a great dessert for $6 now, whereas in the past you paid $9 for a dessert. And places have really reduced the price of desserts because people are really not spending the time dining as they used to. Um, how do you deal with customers who have special dietary needs? The same as anybody else would. Uh, Some says they have a any food allergy or any kind of diet, we just make suggestions and accommodations. You know, uh, eliminating sauces, sauces on the side, um, pan frying or grilling instead of deep frying, whatever a customer wants, we're more than happy to do, and that's just something you have to do these days. What do you think customers like most about your establishment? That it's friendly, and it's consistent. You know, if you get fish and chips here, um, one week is going to be exactly the same. Three weeks, a month, three months, a year up the road. Extremely consistent. Um, we keep our pricing low and, and again consistent. We don't we, we don't run a special and then a week later uh, eliminate it. If we run a special, we do it for a year or two years so that people become accustomed to knowing exactly what to expect, exactly how much they're going to spend. Um, we're extra friendly. Uh, we make sure we thank every customer, we welcome every customer. It's, uh, again, something you get from a hands-on owner that is uh, really imperative in this day and age. Um, how do most of your customers find out about your business? That's a good question. Uh, right now, uh, it's, again, it's repeat business. Uh, any new customers will come from social media. We do a lot of work through Twitter, Facebook, 
Uh, we don't spend any money on print ads anymore. We find they're completely ineffective. Um, we do door-to-door -door flyers once a year to every household in the new market, and uh, we find that's effective. But um, on a daily basis, we're on Twitter three, four times a day. Uh, social media is a huge tool for us now. Sorry? So lastly, what are the most important or most frequently stated method customers become aware of? Oh, you, are, are you asking me when, when a new customer comes in, how have they found out about us? Yeah. Again, it's through social media. Like, um, and from word of mouth. They'll say my neighbor comes here or <coughs> I saw you uh, on Twitter or even Kijiji. We even place ads on Kijiji. Um, that uh, people respond to and they come and they say, oh, I saw you on Kijiji, we decided to give you a try. Or um, we do get walking business because we're located from the largest hospital in the area. Uh, we're just up the block. So people will come in from, from uh, they're visiting somebody or having a baby or something. So that is one area that we do get uh, new business from. But generally, it's through our reputation. We have a really good reputation. And um, we we fight every day to maintain it. And do we have any other questions? Or? Um. No, I think that's it. You want to shut that off for a minute? So thank you for uh, your time. This is very informative. Well, you're more than welcome, and uh, good luck to you. And I wish you uh, all a great career in the hospitality industry. In conclusion, the reason why this restaurant has stayed stayed service for many years is not because they, they were willing to change their menu to fit everybody. What they did was they kept one thing they had and improved upon it, as well as worked on the environment so people will enjoy not only the food, but also the ambiance of the restaurant. Thank you for listening, and please check out The Cove Restaurant because you will really like it there. If you like fish and chips, play a little pool or have a little drink or two, The Cove is your place, located at 735 Newmarket.